Thank you very much, um, and thanks to Jason for your uh, presentation just before. Now, Sarah and I were just saying that uh, a, a lot of what you were sharing, we, we, we saw ourselves in it, and I suppose it's timely that we're up here now to tell you our journey uh, of, of our recent Moodle upgrade. Uh, I'm Rob, I'm Senior Learning Technologist at Dublin City University, and this is Sarah, who is a Senior Software Developer from Catalyst uh, IT. So what we're going to cover briefly in the next few minutes is just kind of give you a little bit of background to ourselves in DCU and Catalyst and our Moodle setup, how we approached planning for our upgrade to Moodle 4.1. We'll go into some detail then on the actual um, uh, uh, nuts and bolts of our testing and the actual technical upgrade, and then we'll just share some uh, reflections uh, on, on why it worked so well uh, at the end. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a, a background, um, I think, you know, uh, uh, in any project like this, obviously, the technology is important, the tools are important, the, the documentation is important, but at the heart of any kind of a project, at the heart of uh, everything, really, are, are, are people. And I think a core reason why this uh, project was such a success was because we operated, really, as, as one core project team, both from the DCU side and on the Catalyst side. So on the DCU side, myself and my good colleague, Suzanne, were project managers, and our, our Moodle support team um, uh, were also heavily involved in, uh, in, in the preparation for the Moodle upgrade. And then on the Catalyst side, there were several people involved as well, as you can see there. Uh, we had Sarah, obviously, as our, as our lead dev. Sam Taylor is our account manager from Catalyst. Natasha was the Catalyst project manager. Paul Walker, who's an absolute wizard when it comes to anything and everything theme-related. Steve, as well, on, on, on infrastructure. And there's, there was definitely more people from Catalyst involved uh, as well. Um, uh, nowhere near close to Jason's 500 uh, people, though, in, in, in UCL, unfortunately. But we were a, a small, nimble team working very closely together, delivering a, a successful upgrade. Um, some of you might have be familiar with, with, with DCU. We, we've been uh, using Moodle for about 20 years now or so and, and heavily involved in the, in the Moodle community. Our Moodle is, is very big and very, very heavily used. It's absolutely a, a mission critical system for the university. Obviously, it supports student teaching, learning and assessment. That goes without saying. But we also use it extensively for internal staff training. We use it for student elections and referendums and a variety of other uh, 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 reasons as well so because of that you know uh, upgrading is important uh, but also because it's so heavily used I think planning and finding the best time for an upgrade is always a is always a challenge and another challenge is obviously how customized we have made our Moodle we've got lots of integrations with, with other systems including Mahara we've got lots and lots of different plugins uh, available so all of that had to be taken into scope as well and importantly my team the teaching enhancement unit we are a center for, for teaching and learning so we are not uh, a tech experts we're not devs by any stretch of the imagination, although we do have a very close relationship with our IT department. And of course, we have a very, very strong and fruitful partnership with uh, Catalyst as well. Yeah, so Catalyst have been um, developing, customizing e um, open source, in particular, e-learning solutions for 25 years. Um, and uh, we're a Moodle Premium partner. Um, I manually counted 82 um, Catalyst plugins in the official Moodle repository. Um, there was no other way of doing it. <laughs> so, um, and there's 196 um, other, you know, open source um, plugins available in GitHub um, that you know you can go and have a look at. Um, and we are committed to committing to Moodle Core. So, yeah, there's lots of those been made. Um, so as we were uh, approaching this this project, certainly on the DCU side, we had lots and lots of questions uh, mulling around in our in, in our heads. We we operate a, a system of upgrading Moodle every two years to an LTS version. So previous to this, we were on Moodle 3.9, and obviously we knew that support was coming to an end. So it was time to think about upgrading and deciding which specific version of Moodle to upgrade to. And we had lots of questions around how do we do this? This is going to be a big uh, a big project. How do we prepare for it? Who do we need to bring together? Obviously, uh, DCU and Catalyst needed to come together very closely to work, but also uh, we have a wide variety of internal stakeholders in the university. We've got, got uh, um, uh, 
relationships with plugin developers and, and people who have helped us customize our Moodle. So obviously all of those need to be brought together as well. Importantly, um, uh, we are a, a, a small team in DCU and we, we, with a very wide range of responsibilities. So a big question was how on earth do we do all of this on top of our day-to-day -day work, uh, both our day-to-day -day learning technology work and our day-to-day -day academic development work. What do we do about our other systems? What decisions do we make about Mahara and plugins and what versions to go to and when to scope those and when to plan and, and, and schedule those upgrades? What resources do we have? What resources do we need? And really crucially, what do we need, ourselves need to know about Moodle 4? That was obviously um, uh, some new changes, some new features, UX, UI improvements coming in Moodle 4. It was really important that we ourselves could uh, approach uh, uh, the upgrade with, with good knowledge of Moodle 4 in our heads. So like, a, like how you would eat an elephant, we just took it one step at a time, one bite at a time. We didn't uh, 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 employ a, a kind of a, an agile methodology as, as Jason did, but we kind of approached it in our own systematic uh, way uh, when it came to the upgrade. And we kind of divided out the, the upgrade into sort of six uh, uh, key phases, scoping, exploring, testing, and building uh, for the upgrade, uh, deploying it, making configurations, and then providing uh, support for our staff and students uh, afterwards. Uh, so scoping was, was, was hugely important. Obviously, uh, we needed to get uh, approval from our Vice President for Academic Affairs to go ahead. Uh, we did manage, luckily, to secure some resourcing to hire a graduate intern, um, uh, when we also secured some resources to uh, explore a sandbox of Moodle 4.1 so that the team ourselves could learn and get to know what was uh, out of the box in, 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 in Moodle 4. Uh, our testing and our upgrading we'll, we'll speak about now in, in, in a bit more detail, but our kind of our systematic approach to that I think really contributed heavily towards the success of the of the upgrade uh, as, uh, as a whole. And then, you know, wrapping around outside of that then after the core upgrade was done, we didn't just clap ourselves on the back and walk off into the sunset, but over the course of the summer uh, have been busy upgrading our support resources and providing uh, introductory workshops for our staff. Uh, this is what our kind of our timeline looked at. So I suppose really late 22, early 23 is when we started um, our initial scoping and engaging with our stakeholders, getting our approval, having ongoing conversations with Catalyst about dates and processes and so on. And uh, Catalyst did a high level plugin review for us as well, which is really useful in helping us make some decisions around what plugins to keep, what plugins to uh, switch out, to remove, uh, what versions to upgrade, etc. Then kind of coming into the springtime, uh, we were very busy exploring our sandbox, documenting kind of different changes that were coming in Moodle 4, planning our communications, uh, and then we entered code freeze, I think, late April or, or early May. And then really in May was our very, very busy period there, very intense two-week period of, of UAT, uh, uh, identifying bugs, resolving bugs, or Sarah resolving all the bugs. I just, you know, found problems and said, Sarah, please help, please fix, <laughs> which she does do because she's amazing. Um, uh, deciding what our priorities were and so on. Uh, in June, uh, uh, is when we actually had the technical upgrade, so the site was down for three days in order to enable that. Most of our core and, and, and third-party plugins were, were, were all upgraded, but several uh, uh, plugins were updated later. And then obviously over the summer, we've been busy uh, uh, supporting our staff and students. Um, you can have a look at our, 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 our the slides later, and there's a link there to our systematic uh, test cards that we use. Some of you may find it useful if planning for your own Moodle upgrade. Uh, the test cards were originally developed by Aurelie and Sam Taylor, and we've remixed them heavily at, at DCU. Uh, but we use the, the, the test cards to test specific roles and test the most common um, uh, actions and, and processes on, on Moodle. And that is a really useful way, I think, for, for uncovering uh, bugs. Um, and sharing the, 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 that document with, with Sarah and the Catalyst gang meant that we could kind of operate out of the same space and quickly identify and resolve uh, issues. And again, that a kind of ongoing checking with the team uh, to make sure testing was, was going well and, and was, was on track was, was really important and linking back into what we ourselves had learned in our earlier phase around what was, what's a new behaviour in Moodle 4.1 versus what is an unexpected uh, behaviour, making lots of decisions on the, on, on the go about what plugins to keep, what plugins to remove, what uh, theme issues needed to be resolved, etc. But really our, kind of our three big showstoppers that we said we, we needed to make sure these worked before we went ahead with the upgrade was making sure our SAML authentication worked, our text matching integration worked and that uh, uh, Paul from Catalyst could fix all of the, the, the bugs we uncovered in the, in, in the theme. But uh, Sarah obviously uh, was, was, was uh, hugely involved in resolving all of the various different bugs that, uh, that, that were uh, un, un, uncovered as well. Yeah, so um, 
the decisions that had to be made were really around the 4.1 change. Mm. Um, so, you know, talking to Robert and letting him know which plugins have actually been, mm. uh, you know, made to work with 4.1. Um, it, it was just constant decisions. So, you know, I've done loads of upgrades in the past in previous roles, um, working on my own. Um, so, you know, if I wanted to know, if I found a piece of information that I was like, I'm glad I found that, it was so important to pass it on to Rob so that he could make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of all of this, we have a go, no go meeting. Um, so it was all about making sure that stuff that was really important for a go mm -hmm. decision was done before that time. And then prioritizing things to say, well, okay, that's not great, mm -hmm. but we could actually wait until after upgrade for that plugin to be updated, or maybe, you know, we could update it and push push the change back upstream. Um, and and yeah, it's kind of a lot of things to try and keep track mm. of and juggle and yeah. let you know about. Um, so yeah, we we basically had um, you know we've got our internal kind of tracking system. Um, but it got to the point where it was so on the fly that we had just like a spreadsheet and we were kind of almost having live conversations in, in the cells as we went along. Um, but then on top of that, you know, we had weekly check-ins. Mm -hmm. So we actually looked at, right, where, where are we in this process? Let's prioritize this stuff. If, if this isn't done, it's a no-go. Mm -hmm. You know, that one can, can wait till later. Um, and at the same time, Paul was looking at the theme. Um, it's a, a child theme of Boost. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very mature now, but again, the change to 4.1 meant that we had to make some changes to that. Mm -hmm. and, and Rob was brilliant in kind of finding things that, you know, kind of were deep down in the depths of the system that needed fixing. And obviously those then went out to all our other clients mm -hmm. that, um, that have the, the Cat Awesome theme. So huge thanks to Rob for finding those mm -hmm. and getting them fixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, on the day of the upgrade itself, um, um, obviously uh, a lot of the work was was led on the on the catalyst side of things, but it was important for us in DCU to keep our staff and students up to date. So you know, uh, they had a kind of all 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 hands email going out, letting them know we had now entered uh, maintenance mode, and, and we, again when it was lifted, we were again having regular check-ins with, with with catalyst, and we were on call, uh, ready for the maintenance mode to be lifted so that we could go in and do some uh, deployment, and and that was a kind of a twenty four seven call. I think I think it was like eleven or or. Or, or 11 o'clock or midnight or something when, when the site was lifted out of hard maintenance so then myself and Suzanne jumped straight in and had to make a few uh, configurations to the to the, to, to the site. I think there's about 40 different configurations we had to make some theme things, changing the site colours, uh, changing the uh, language string text and media area back to label which is the term that all our staff and students are, are, are familiar with uh, and, and, and so on. But uh, the, the Catalyst's process for, for, for upgrading was, was, was very, very smooth as you can see. Yeah, um, so three days included a, f a full infrastructure uplift. Obviously, a, an upgrade wouldn't normally take three days. Um, so, uh, you know, that was kind of backing up and restoring the database into a new environment. Um, and, yeah, really kind of just giving it a, a complete uplift. Um, and I actually wasn't there for the upgrade. I was on leave. <laughs> so that, that kind of goes to show just how great this was. You know, it was so well documented, um, which I think is re a really good thing. You know, if you're, if you're doing an upgrade, make sure every single mm -hmm. step is documented. You know, we did dry runs. We, we did like, you know, we'd already done a test on the UAT site. We did dry runs, so we had all the timings and Rob could know, you know, if there was anything that might cause a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. Because for you guys, I know like they've got very, you know, you've got very strict like times. Yeah. It's like, if this doesn't happen, there's a problem, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. So, you know, we were really, really aiming for that, that go rather than a no go, which we got. And um, so, yeah, the 53 steps that we had documented meant I could go on holiday and the upgrade happened without a problem. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I suppose just to kind of wrap up now and 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 and, and share with you um, uh, kind of our, our our learnings from from this approach. I think going back to the earlier slide, we very much operated as 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 one team, and I don't think you can have a, a smooth or successful upgrade without taking that kind of an approach. Um, you know, uh, uh, particularly during the, the the UAT phase and and the actual technical upgrade, as as Sarah was saying. You know, we were in constant communication, working out of shared documents, documenting things. Uh, 
uh, having information flowing back and forth in good time, um, uh, so that decisions could be made and the and the task could be could be uh, advanced. So it was really important that everyone was invested and committed and giving time to the project, um, both from the catalyst side and the DCU side. I think uh, you know you need to realise that um, uh, an upgrade such as this is a distinct project in and of itself, but it's something that takes a lot of time and needs to be uh, committed to. We had our six phase approach for structuring it, um, and um, uh, really I think you know Catalyst is our Moodle partner, but we are partners in very much the, the very true essence of, of the word, and partnership is a, a value that both of us uh, hold dearly and, and, and live by, and I think that is really you know at the bedrock of, 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 of why this was a, a successful upgrade. Yes. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.